Hello everyone, I want us to discuss some of the common mistakes that uh, we usually make when uh, attending to women with previous caesarean section. The first common mistake is, uh, is to do a trial of labor in a woman who's had more than one previ previous caesarean section, someone with two previous caesar, three previous caesar, and so forth. In our environment, there is no need for you to try to try a vagina delivery in someone who's who's got two previous Caesar and above. Yeah, the safest option, the safest option for us is to take that woman for a Caesarean section. There are times when uh, the woman herself may want to try the labor, may want to deliver uh, vaginally she has to understand you have to make it clear to her that it is risky both to her and to the baby the risks to her include a uterine rupture that may you know involve the bladder may involve the ureters and because of the rupture she may suffer hemorrhage and that is very risky on her life you know and then for the baby baby may come out asphyxiated or she may lose the baby so you have to make it very clear of those risks and that they are high the risks are very high to both her and her baby if she insists on having a vaginal delivery but otherwise otherwise the safest option in a woman with two previous caesar and above is straight for a caesarean uh, section the second common mistake that we make is the argumentation of labor you know we want to give oxytocin in a woman with a previous caesar whether she's got one previous caesar or she's got three previous caesar again in our environment because our monitoring facilities and the human resource is not up to date it is better it is safer if you avoid argumenting women with a previous caesar which is the same with inducing labor which is the third uh, the third problem inducing labor in someone with a previous caesar is a no-go area in our environment so i'm mentioning these things because once in a while you may find someone argumenting uh, someone argumenting labor in a previous caesar or you may find someone uh, inducing labor in a woman who's got a previous caesar whether it is one or it is two again it is very risky it is very risky to the mother and it is very risky to the baby the biggest risk is that she may rupture and she may lose blood and she may lose her life so you know you as a doctor if at all you do that if at all you do that you should be able to take responsibility for the consequences now you as the one who has made that decision should be able to take that personal responsibility for the consequences and because it is a known risk and because it is a known risk you avoid as much as possible to argument labor or to induce or to induce labor in someone with the previous desire section vacuum <clears throat> or forceps you know once in a while you get someone with a previous caesar probably one previous caesar they are fully dilated and the head is right there you may be tempted to do a vacuum or a forceps in order to deliver a baby the risk of that uh, of a rupture happening is high there's a high risk that there could be a rupture so you know again just avoid it don't do it take a force take a for caesar it is a safer option at times when you deliver a woman with a previous caesar eh, vaginally she has had a successful v-back there are times that you may suspect for one reason or another you may suspect that you know eh, you know she's, she she may have ruptured she may have ruptured the best option for you at that moment, if you suspect a rupture, is to take her to theater and open and explore. 
and explore from theater in the olden times in the olden times what used to happen is that okay someone would do a ve and go into the uterus vaginally and start exploring with their finger you know the integrity of the scar with their finger they're trying to explore the integrity of the scar the risk there is that as you're exploring with your finger there's a there's a chance that you may actually uh, open up that, that that previous cesarean section scar so over time that has gone out of practice whenever you suspect that there's a rupture the, the best thing is just to take her to theater and open up and check if she has ruptured or not yeah, otherwise every time that a woman delivers whether she's got a previous scissor or not you know uh, put in the the necessary precautions of measuring the pulse the respiration the blood pressure the urine output and you check for uh, uh, vaginal bleeding at least for the next uh, few hours so that you are sure that nothing wrong has happened you know the best candidate for a vaginal birth after a cesarean section is someone who's had a is someone who's had a VBAC before for example if you've got a woman who's in uh, who is in a third pregnancy now her first pregnancy she delivered by cesarean section her second pregnancy she delivered a uh, she, she delivered vaginally she had a successful trial of labor after a cesarean section in the third pregnancy she's a very good candidate for for a VBAC because she's had one successful VBAC before now in the same woman as she goes into her fourth fifth pregnancy she goes into the territory of hyperity and when there is hyperity it becomes risky it becomes riskier now again to go for a to go for a vaginal delivery so when there is high parity in a previous cesarean section it is best if you take a for cesarean section because as the number of vaginal births increases after a previous cesarean section the risk for rupture increases so the best option for her again is to take a for a cesarean section even though she's got two or three successful VBACs so these are some of the common uh, the common mistakes that you'll find uh, uh, even amongst doctors one or two disagreements here about whether or not you should argument whether or not you should give misoprostol but you know uh, especially when you're starting out it's better you go about doing things in the, in, in the safer in the safer way so Thank you for listening and I hope to see you on the next one.